RC Top 3, a weekly podcast of the top three stories from Regnum Christi. In Memoriam, Heidi Marie Subert, 1969 to 2021. Heidi Marie Subert was born on the 1st of November, 1969, in Cottonwood, Idaho, where she grew up on a dairy farm, the fifth of eight children born to Thomas and Cornelia Subert. Despite the early death of her beloved father when she was 11, Heidi spoke with fondness of her childhood, her father and mother, and her many brothers and sisters, Maurice, Aloysius, Allie, Jean, Lucia, Teresa, Elizabeth, deceased, Daniel, Danny, and John Fowler, as Cornelia had remarried. From early on, Heidi demonstrated a beautiful desire to love and serve others, receiving the Prize Award at her high school graduation. She became a certified nurse's aide and worked in local nursing homes and her hometown hospital, St. Mary's. She graduated from the University of Idaho in 1993 with a Bachelor of Science degree in education, double majoring in communications and literature, and completed her teacher training. Her love for literature and for writing, especially poetry, persisted throughout her life. During all this time, Heidi's faith was everything to her, and she had become a lay member of Regnum Christi in the summer of 1989. Eventually, responding to an interior call, Heidi consecrated her life to God in Regnum Christi on the 15th of September, 1993, committing herself even more fully to Him in the service of others. She solemnly renewed this consecration on the 1st of September, 1995. She began her initial religious formation in Rhode Island and shortly after became part of a team dedicated to vocation promotion based in Rye, New York, and traveled extensively throughout the U.S. and Canada. In 2000, she was assigned as vice director of the pre-candidacy program in Wakefield, Rhode Island, a place that she loved. She completed her master's in school administration with Providence College shortly after, and apart from a brief stint in Everest College, Clarkston, Michigan, she remained in Rhode Island until 2014. She then worked as the formation director in Everest Academy, Lamont, Chicago, until arriving in Cincinnati, Ohio, to serve in local pastoral ministry and, more recently, as director of the community, as well as young adult section director. Heidi will be especially remembered and appreciated for her readiness to reach out and accompany others in need, and for her love of making everything beautiful in so many ways, from her gift for interior decorating and of finding reasons and fun ways to celebrate with others, to her sisterly fashion advice, and, above all, for sharing her personal love and experience of Jesus, her spouse, with those around her. She will be greatly missed by her mother, Cornelia, her siblings, and all her beloved nieces and nephew and great-niece and goddaughter and three great-nephews, her many cousins, fellow members of Regnum Christi, especially her Legionary of Christ brothers, and her fellow consecrated women of Regnum Christi. We pray for the repose of Heidi's soul and for her family at this time. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Heidi Subert's funeral will be held in Cottonwood, Idaho, and memorial masses will be held in Washington, D.C. and Cincinnati, Ohio. The funeral mass will be live-streamed on the Consecrated Women of Regnum Christi YouTube channel and Facebook page. Flowers and cards can be sent to the Subert family at 602 Church Street, Apartment B, Cottonwood, Idaho, 83522, or, if you wish, in lieu of flowers, as is customary in the United States, the family has asked you to please consider a donation to either one of the following organizations. Sisters of Life, please include Heidi's name. Heidi's Community, Consecrated Women of Regnum Christi. The work of the Consecrated Women of Regnum Christi in Magdala, Holy Land, please include Heidi's name. Legionaries of Christ in North America. Growing ECYD from the Canadian Prairies This year, ECYD, Regnum Christi's youth organization, is celebrating 50 years of encouraging and supporting lived personal friendships among adolescents with Jesus Christ and with each other. One of the resources that has been offered by ECYD for over the past 15 years are Conquest and Challenge, These programs are directed toward boys and girls in K-12 through grade and strive to form adolescents as Christian leaders to transform culture through a unique curriculum that is virtue-based, teen-led, gender-specific, team-based, and service-driven. 
the products and resources, training and support, and access to an international network of ECYD camps, retreats, and mentors is what makes the Conquest and Challenge programs an effective tool to lead adolescents to a deeper relationship with Christ. One of those ECYD members who has been profoundly impacted by the Conquest program is Donovan Novak, who lives in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Shortly after Conquest was launched, Donovan's father, Trevor Novak, established the program in Regina with the help of Regnum Christi members and men he had gathered from Familia and other RC initiatives. The club became one of the first groups in North America to use and implement the Conquest curriculum and be a part of developing its unique method. Donovan has been involved with Conquest right from the start, as a participant, then as a team leader, and now as a member of the ECYD Life Department. In this role, which he has held for the past two years, Donovan is primarily responsible for the products and resources for the ECYD programs of Challenge and Conquest. Some of these responsibilities include designing and producing Challenge and Conquest curriculum and branded materials, as well as managing the websites and communication. Despite this new, larger role, Donovan remains closely connected to the Conquest program that continues at his home parish. Conquest Regina currently runs all three of the Conquest programs, junior, middle school, and high school, and has 50 to 60 boys attending its weekly meetings. And some of the boys attend Conquest twice a week. Something unique that we do is that for the first two years of being a team leader, the boys come two nights a week. One night they are team leader for the younger boys, and the second night they have their own meeting with their peers, says Donovan. And we play some of the most intense dodgeball games I've ever seen. Regina also has a vibrant and growing Challenge Girls Club. Another factor unique to Conquest Regina is its location. Situated in the middle of the Canadian prairies, Regina is nearly 500 miles from the nearest legionary community, in the next province over in Calgary, Alberta. Because of this distance, Conquest Regina is completely run by the families involved while maintaining a close relationship with Regnum Christi and the legionaries, particularly by bringing in a priest to host retreats for the boys once or twice a year. Staying connected to ECYD and the greater Regnum Christi community is a bit difficult because we are so remote, says Donovan. But it's also one of our greatest strengths because we are self-run by volunteers. Conquest Regina is currently in the middle of a project called In the Spirit of St. Nicholas, an annual Advent initiative aimed at promoting St. Nicholas's example of the virtues of generosity and care for the poor. The Conquest boys promote the project at various parishes throughout the diocese, selling Canadian-made chocolates. All of the proceeds of the chocolate sales go to a charity of the boys' choice, and the club keeps no money for itself. Typically, the project brings in around $4,000, and this year, the money raised will be going to the Marion Center, a local Madonna house that serves the poor in downtown Regina. Throughout the years, Donovan has been increasingly grateful for his involvement in Conquest and ECYD. Conquest is an incredible program that has impacted my life immensely and continues to form young men in the faith, says Donovan. I have had the opportunity to be a team leader for each of the Conquest programs, from father-son to high school, and now I have the privilege of locally mentoring an incredible group of young men who give of themselves as Conquest team leaders. And in his role as a member of the ECYD Life Department, Donovan has big hopes for the Conquest and Challenge programs and for ECYD as a whole. A goal of mine this year, after a year where many clubs, including the one in Regina, could not run due to COVID regulations, is to get as many new programs running as possible. Now, more than ever, our youth need fellowship, a community where they can be themselves and grow in their identity as a child of God alongside their peers. The bigger vision is that the growth of Challenge and Conquest initiates the growth of ECYD and Regnum Christi. ECYD is what leads to a personal, committed relationship with Christ and the lifestyle of an apostle. From a young age, Donovan knew he wanted to conquer the whole world for Christ, and for him, ECYD is the tool that God has given him to do just that. I believe that the best and easiest way to build up the kingdom is through Regnum Christi, and the best and easiest way to grow Regnum Christi is through ECYD. If we can build the foundation of our church through our youth, the future has so much more hope. In this jubilee year of ECYD, all members of Regnum Christi are invited to reflect with gratitude on the gift of ECYD and its call to a personal friendship with Christ. Read more about how ECYD promotes and emanates the charism of Regnum Christi in the recently published essay, 
the pledge of friendship with Christ and among each other, ECYD, the Regnum Christi charism lived by young people. Learn more about ECYD's Impact One 2021 appeal, which is raising funds that go directly to building up the conquest and challenge programs in order to minister to adolescents through prayer, formation, team life, accompaniment, and apostolate. And to see more about Conquest Regina, visit their website at conquestregina.ca. Lessons from the Workshop of St. Joseph by Father Daniel Brandenburg, L.C. Part 14, The Power of Pilgrimage, Continued. A Catalyst for Change Raising a child is no easy task. Even with the perfect child, Joseph and Mary experience challenges and the difficulty of letting go as he grows. For Christian parents today, the example and intercession of St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother are a vital necessity. One of the hardest aspects of child rearing is that kids can see through any phoniness and they mimic behavior better than they follow instructions. When my siblings and I started using explicatives in everyday speech, my parents realized that my dad's anger and swearing were having a negative impact outweighing their injunctions not to swear. Dad realized he had to change. We instituted a cuss cup, and for every swear word, we had to put a quarter in the cup, and Dad a dollar. Each Sunday, we deposited the contents of the cup in the collection at church. Our delighted pastor couldn't figure out where the extra hundreds of dollars were coming from. Yet as the months passed by, the amount gradually dipped, and language in our home was cleaned up. My dad is a very different man than he once was, and his word choice reflects that. Children emulate their parents, and if parents would raise their children right, their actions need to align with their beliefs. Practice what you preach, or you will eventually change what you preach. Pilgrimage is a powerful way to put your faith into action. Going on family pilgrimage, which at the beginning may entail simply that difficult adventure of making it to Sunday Mass, displays what your priorities really are. Like the Holy Family, seek out those holy places that can reinforce what you believe and enable your children to experience the love of God firsthand. Pilgrimage was an important part of the Holy Family's life, an expression of their faith and fidelity to God's law. It was also a catalyst for strengthening it. Faith is not a gift we can take for granted. Each child, each new generation must discover God, experience His love, and opt for His way. Parents cannot abdicate from the sacred responsibility to introduce their children to the Lord. Catholic schools or a catechism program can support, but never replace, the responsibility. There is no task more important for parents than bringing their children to Jesus. Sometimes well-intentioned parents consider that protecting their child from failure or danger is most important, or perhaps giving them every advantage, experience, or opportunity. This mindset can easily devolve into materialism or overprotectiveness that ends up inhibiting their complete development. Introducing a child to God unleashes a completely different trajectory. Parents will pass. God alone will never let us down and be always present. Only God can know each one's heart, and His love alone can fill the deepest desires for acceptance and completion. At the end of life, He alone is judge, and He awards the prize for life lived well. No greater gift can be given a child than a relationship with a source of love and life. There is no foolproof path to this relationship, but family pilgrimage to Sunday Mass, regular confession, holy sites, and pilgrimage destinations around the world can strengthen faith significantly, just as it did for Joseph's family on their annual pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Break the monotony of materialistic existence and give greater priority to the eruptions of grace by planning your next pilgrimage today. For more resources, visit www.regnumchristi.org or download the Regnum Christi English app today.